Okay, so good morning for folks in uh, folks in Europe. Uh, and let me share the. Uh, I'll put this on the chat window for for note taking. Uh, so welcome to the June uh, core team meeting. Uh, yeah, feel free to add your notes here uh, while people are going through slides. And I think I covered everybody on the in terms of the attendees. So we'll just get started without further ado. Uh, so it's, the slides uh, been it's it's on the uh, Google Sheet, so you should be able to see the link. And just uh, four things on the agenda, uh, but um, if you have time, obviously we can cover other topics. Uh, just a quick one. Um, I think I copied all the core team members on the MR. Just wanted to make a slight tweak to the core team mission uh, to cover, um, you know, what kind of contributions that we're looking for from the core, potential core team members. Uh, it's been discussion on that and, and a couple of other issues. That's one. Uh, and David's going to talk about, um, I mean, there's a discussion on a couple of issues, but the feature of contributors.gitlab.com, uh, which obviously hasn't been updated for uh, probably like close to seven months now. Uh, so that's uh, the next one. And I'll do a quick recap of the hackathon that just happened a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we have an existing issue. Um, this is following conversations that we had in, in New Orleans about uh, creating a handbook page for the core team. I mean, we obviously do have a web page, um, but I thought it would be nice to create a handbook page uh, to have more details on logistical stuff as well. Uh, so those are the topics that we talked about, uh, but let me know if you have anything else that you want to add uh, towards the end, either now or I mean, towards the end of the call. Uh, if there are no objections, I guess we can just uh, proceed on, on the topic. Um, so, I mean, so here's the, uh, I mean, core team mission at the top, I mean, which we kind of iterated uh, I mean, last time we did, I mean, George uh, led the redesign of the, of the page. Um, but I thought it would be uh, good to sort of go into more detail about what we mean by uh, con contribution. Uh, we have this link to the, the contribute page. Uh, I mean, that shows you all the different sorts of contributions that we, uh, uh, we welcome from the community members from development onto UX design, translation, and, and documentation. But I thought it'd be good to sort of be explicit about, I mean, we're not just looking for programmers or people are good uh, that are just willing to write a lot of code. Uh, so I create, um, so, um, and uh, I think Takuya, he's not on the call today, had uh, questions about other uh, examples from other com uh, communities where uh, the equivalent of, of the core team or leadership team, uh, where the contributions are not just code development. And I found a couple of examples. I, I, won't go into a whole lot of details here. These are all live links that you can click on. I mean, Kubernetes is, is you know, probably one of the uh, high velocity communities out there. And I mean, basically it says, I mean, any contribution you make in terms of issues or discussions are all valid. Um, so you can take a look at uh, sort of their charter in, in their GitHub repo. And OPNFE, I mean, this is a community that I was a community manager for before I came here. And there, we also explicitly made a point there, point where we weren't just looking for people that, that are writing codes. Uh, and this helped make the community more inclusive. And then, you know, it's such an arbitrarily high bar, I think, if, if we give people an impression that all we're looking for is people on contributing code. So let me, I'll just like pause there real quick and see if people have any questions or comments or other concerns. Um, but, and there was a discussion in terms of like a future core team members, you know, what are we looking for? So that's sort of what uh, caused me to think about this, but let me know if people have any concerns or questions. People are really quiet. Either you all agree, or I mean, I yeah. uh, <laughs> I can see yeah. thumbs up from Winnie. Um, yeah. I mean, I've got a couple of comments myself. I mean, I think mm -hmm. uh, I think we should if our 
if we say that everyone can contribute, uh, I think um, we should make it as easy to contribute with any kind of, of contributions and uh, as celebrated. Uh, the same way we celebrate code contributions, we should celebrate contributions to the forum, we should contrib uh, celebrate contributions to, the, to documentation. Um, so in that regard, I fully agree. Um, I'll mention a couple of things that are uh, indirectly related to, uh, to this. One is, um, um, I think, I think that if, um, the, the discussion on the mission um, is happening on the uh, on the web page MR, and that's fine. But I think uh, it might be worth moving forward um, to um, to move all of this to uh, a mission and uh, how the team works to the handbook, as we discussed on uh, on contribute. Um, the reason I'm mentioning this because I saw, I saw it was changed on the on the on the page, and uh, I'm afraid that the page will keep growing um, and growing. And also, if we uh, if we modify the web page. Uh, we always have to make sure that we don't break the layout, whereas the handbook is more agile to um, um, for modifications, essentially. So, as a summary for me is, uh, yes, I agree. Uh, let's consider uh, moving forward, perhaps um, having a handbook section for the for the core team. Cool. Regarding, regarding yeah. contributions outside yeah. of code, um, I think for docs, uh, it's just the amount of merge requests uh, that you can count. Um, that gets probably more difficult in in other areas, for example, the uh, the forum or I'm not sure, like com general community support is probably more difficult to measure. Um, but I think that's not a huge problem if you see people very active in those area areas, we can still discuss if everybody agrees on that. So in, like in terms of code changes or docs changes, the metric of number of merge requests is quite easy. But I don't think that should keep us from adding other people. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, in, in terms of like metrics or measuring people's contribution, yeah, it's, it's obviously easier with, with merge requests. And that's why I think there, there might be like bias towards like code and, and development, but uh, but I mean, there are other ways to sort of see the see the impact that people make, like in Gitter or other forums, like the type of support that people provide, like even on IRC channels. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it may not be as easy, easily quantifiable, but you know, I, I think people could can sort of see the body of work and make make decent judgment. Yeah. So, sort of following up on what David said, I mean, the 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 tweak I made to the to the web page through the MR is is kind of minor. Uh, I didn't want to make it too long. I just you sort of spelt out community support development documentation uh, through like UX design. Um, so, um, but if you have any comments on the MR, other suggestions, I mean, feel free to let me know. But I, I agree, David. We could probably add a lot more details and more maybe even detailed steps in in the handbook page when we have one. Other comments or uh, concerns or? Um, no, from my side, this looks good. Uh, mm -hmm. If we make a handful page, can we directly link that from that uh, from the quality page? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, that we should be the goal. So, I mean, yeah. you, you know, maybe this is, I don't know if this is the right terminology, but uh, uh, the web page could be more of an executive summary, but with more details yeah, yeah. Uh, that could be found on the on the handbook page. And then, yeah, it, it could sort of, uh, yeah, there could be a cross link between the two. Yeah. Oh, actually, one one question unrelated to the topic, but uh, mm -hmm. looking at the web page, um, uh, George, here's a question for you in terms of the of the design. Um, I know that we added all of the information um, mm -hmm. to the team YAML file. Uh, for core team members in the same way that we do with the GitLab team. Um, there used to be like a blurb uh, as in um, well, something about uh, the uh, the members. Um, this doesn't appear as a pop-up on the, uh, on the uh, core team page. Um, 
is it uh, because of, uh, I mean, if there is there any technical di uh, difficulty in implementing that, is it just a lack of time? Uh, is it something that you um, were thinking as living as it is? I, I'm just curious, that's all. Uh, well, I think it's possible. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why we skipped that, but uh, it was mostly just to quickly get this in and uh, apply the new design. Uh, the, the, this part is also visible now at the team page and the company team page for all members, yeah. including core team members. But we can uh, in, uh, investigate to see if this is easy to add uh, to the core team page too. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I think, I think it's, um, it would be whenever we point new community members to the core team page, for instance, for instance um, I think it's good to, to see, uh, to see uh, well, or to learn a bit more about uh, um, what members of our community, what they do, where they come from, um, that's, uh, that's all. Uh, yes, I think I agree. Yes, it would be nice to have it. Awesome, thanks. Cool. Okay, so it, it, I mean, I, I don't think there's a reason to sort of belabor the discussion. It looks like uh, we're uh, in agreement, but if you have any questions on or comments on the MR, uh, on this slight tweak that I made, uh, appreciate it. And then we could add more details on the handbook page, we'll, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Oh. Okay, so moving uh, to the next topic, and David, I'll I'll turn things over to you. Uh, I think you had a couple of you started a couple of discussion on on some of the issues, so I'll turn things over to you. And feel free to share. It. Let me stop sharing so you can share it, if you like, or do you want me to keep sharing? I can share myself. I'll I'll just okay. show the um, okay. Dashboard. Let me just stop sharing then. So cool. Thanks, Ray. Okay, so um, essentially, um, just for some context, where it, where, where this all uh, where this all started, um, the, um, Ray has mentioned it already. We uh, used to have, or we still have, the uh, contributors.gitlab.com page, uh, which essentially showcases the, um, the contributions to to GitLab from the whole community, um, either um, GitLab team members. Uh, or the wider community. The, um, the issue that we had with the, with the site was essentially that um, after it was uh, all set up, uh, it was maintained for, for quite a while, but <clears throat> at some point this, uh, this stopped. It's been, um, yeah, I think seven, nine months up until now. Um, we don't really have the resources right now to, uh, to keep it up to date uh, and not even to, uh, to maintain the infrastructure. So, um, in the spirit of um, reducing the number of things that uh, that we have, but still uh, making sure that that we have an alternative for it, um, what we were proposing was to replace the GitLab contributor, com uh, the current GitLab contributor side by a dashboard on the uh, from the Bitergy, uh, from the set of Bitergy dashboards that we already used. Um, the advantages will be would be that there's no nothing that we need to maintain. We are flexible in terms of updating the uh, the metrics that we want to show on the on the dashboards and um, um, and uh, yeah, essentially we don't have to maintain either the code or the infrastructure. That's what I was trying to say. Um, I think um, I mean some of you might have been um, involved in maintaining or developing the site, so you might want to add uh, more more on this. But essentially, what we're showing here is the is the ranking of uh, of contributors. And um, the, the proposal was to uh, replace it by a dashboard. This is uh, one that we could use, uh, for instance. Um, but we can, as I said, we can treat the visualizations that are shown here in, uh, in any way. Right now, it is, um, it is set up to show other community members by default, but we can um, change that. Um, or we can also change that on the fly. Um, and uh, it shows. Um, other metrics such as uh, total contributors, which is uh, one that, uh, that uh, we always show in different uh, places across the website uh, and in presentations and um, some other information that uh, we thought might be useful, such as uh, the organizations that, that um, contribute to GitLab or have contributed to GitLab. Uh, it shows things uh, such as the, um, um, how we're doing in terms of uh, meeting open days for our first, res uh, for resp first response. Um, it shows um, backlog of repositories uh, and also uh, like the actual backlog as in life every every day. Um, but uh, I mean, to me, the uh, the crux of the question 
would be, um, as it seems there is consensus uh, on the on the issue, uh, I would uh, advocate for just um, doing the red redirect to the to the dashboard. And then I was originally thinking of um, sunsetting the GitLab contributors um, site, but I'm thinking, um, and I'd like to hear what you think, perhaps we should move it to an, arch uh, an archive instance um, so that it doesn't disappear. Um, but um, that would be my, my question, my question, my questions. A, if everyone agrees that we should go ahead and just do the right direct, and then what do we do with the actual um, site? Uh, so I, I agree that we could redirect it, um, but I think we should redirect it to a dashboard that displays a little less information than the one you just provided, simply because if you use that as an entry point, uh, there are too much, too many information, it kind of overwhelms you. And if you compare it to the current contributor page, uh, you get like, three information so the name of the contributor the uh, number of commits and a list of the contributors and that's pretty much it um, we have that in the beta dashboard in one graph i think or two graphs and then a whole bunch of other informations that i don't think are relevant as at the start we could link to that dashboard as uh, as a means to get further information I guess, but I think as a start, we should use a minimal dashboard. Thanks. Yeah, we can definitely we can definitely do that. I mean, to me, um, to me personally, what uh, the information that's important is the ranking of uh, of contributors because there's something that can be um, well, like aspirational info uh, or inspirational info. For uh, for new contributors and also for existing con uh, contributors, and perhaps then the um, the number of um, um, the total number of contributors. Any thoughts on uh, on what to do with the with the current box? Would uh, you favor um, just removing uh, removing it or moving it to an archive uh, you like an archive URL that has like this the banner that says this uh, this information is no longer updated except for historical purposes? I think if we have all the information that was included in the old page, we can simply remove it uh, in favor of the new one. Um, if there's no information missing, if there's information missing, maybe we should add it to the new page. Um, and I think it's a it's a Rails application. So if we keep it unmaintained for a long time, it could be that it attracts uh, security issues, vulnerabilities that we don't want. So if we want to archive it and keep it online, maybe you should just um, export the application to static pages and link them, which may already be too much work for just the purpose of keeping it archived. Sure, sounds good to me. I mean, um, yeah, I think I think the um, both security and missing information are really good, really good points. One of the reasons why I, why I mentioned giving it uh, as, as an archive was also. I didn't just want to throw the site away because people have been putting quite a lot of work uh, on it. Um, but um, yeah, it's up to those people to uh, to decide what to do with it or how to say what to do with it. So I mean, I'm, I'm more than fine with uh, sunsetting it. So I mean, maybe this is a dumb question. I mean, when when you say archiving, David, are you talking about like the code or because I mean, the data is. Yes, you, sorry. Yeah. I should have, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think code, that makes sense. Yeah. The code will stay. I mean, will stay on the right. repo uh, as right. uh, as it is. Right. Um, I was thinking of, um, I say, moving the um, the site to, uh, let's say, archive.contributors.gitlab.com uh, as, mm -hmm. as a URL that makes that clear and perhaps adding a banner. But as Winnie is saying, um, if this uh, is uh, a too much work, b mm -hmm. uh, might pose security risk uh, if I maintain. And if right. there's no missing data, then it might not make sense. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. 
Cool. Then I'll, I think I'll the next step then uh, I'll update the issue with a with a comment uh, on okay. uh, yeah let's sunset the site and then let's do the redirect and let's simplify the dashboard. Yeah, I haven't thought about uh, Hannes's point, but I think that's valid. I think what we had before it's 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 pretty simple, and then people can always drill down if they want to, if they want more details. I guess so. Might be a little bit more overwhelming. Cool. Thanks, David. I guess I'll go back to sharing my screen. Let's hit the share button. Okay. So back to the slides. Um, so quick update on the hackathon uh, that just got wrapped up uh, a couple of weeks ago. I just wanted to show a chart. Uh, I mean, we're doing really well for, for like our first three hackathons in terms of like MRs coming in and um, I don't, it, it, it's, it, there's been a, a bit of a decline for, for the last one. Um, so uh, we're, I think David and I are both hoping for like a continued increase, but the quality MRs were good. I mean, there were like MRs or issues that were highlighted by product managers on, on day one and somebody like picked it up within a couple of hours. Uh, so that was pretty impressive. And um, a couple of people, or at least one of the people that won on the second prize is like a new contributor. So that was pretty, that was pretty cool. So he seemed pretty excited about that. And uh, uh, I mean, I felt like, I mean, some of the core team members, I felt like you guys are holding, holding back a bit. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's the case, but if I felt like you guys were, uh, didn't want to monopolize the first, first place prizes, but uh, I think I even um, played a little guilt trip on George to submit an MR, which he did in the last few hours. But um, so, uh, I mean, one of the things that we want to do for a future hackathon is to make the date, I mean, set the date earlier. Um, I mean, I've been, I even got this feedback from people within GitLab to, to see if I can uh, schedule the date a lot sooner than announcing it like a month before, which I used to do. Uh, so the hackathon date for Q3 is going to be the last week of August. Uh, so hopefully a lot of people will be back from vacation by then. Uh, obviously there'll be more announcements, um, but um, yeah, I mean it's it's uh, uh, but it's even if it's uh, like all virtual, I, I I think it's like a fun way for people to kind of get together. I mean even the one of the uh, second place prize winner. I mean, this one of the comments he made and the issue was that it, it was sort of nice to meet people virtually. Uh, so hopefully we can uh, keep that going. So, cool. Okay, I think that's that. David, did you have anything you want to add? Or? I, have, I have a question, Ray. Um, yeah. When you're saying that the feedback that you got um, from folks was, uh, were, was that we should set the date earlier, you mean for this particular hackathon, or as in the next one? Or, or in going like in the future, like uh, somebody was asking like if I have the dates for like Q3 and Q4, um, so uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, oh, yeah, so, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just trying to understand the feedback. Yeah. So, um, was the feedback that um, it would be better better to publish the date the dates earlier or to uh, to choose uh, earlier dates? Uh, no, no, announce the dates earlier. So okay, yeah, sure. yeah. So that people can sort of plan ahead of time. So that was sort yeah. of the feedback I got, uh, especially people from uh, within GitLab. Yeah, I think I think now then I mean at least in this one then uh, you added the date already on the on the landing page and it's yep. uh, the and the countdown is already there. So I think we're good right. there. Cool. Okay. So any other questions or comments on the hackathon? Uh, I think we should uh, perhaps spend some more time on the uh, on on the uh, prices next time. Perhaps make make it something that's not uh, that it uh, specific. Uh, just to to test um, if um, if that would be uh, an incentive. I don't. I think Ray and I had this conversation. I'm not sure about making it like super big prices because uh, it should be a fun event and just people should not just participate for um, for let's say price um, price money or things like that. But I think uh, for the last second we've been using things from from the GitLab shop. I'm wondering if we could get some. Uh, something that's uh, some gadgets as a, as a price that are not GitLab specific. 
but yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm open to to suggestions. Yep. Cool. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, yeah, we sort of already talked about this uh, when we're talking about uh, updating the mission. And here's a relevant issue that I think I opened um, either during or like right after Contribute in New Orleans um, about a month ago. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it definitely makes sense to create a handbook page. I can get started with the draft and uh, if you can all uh, uh, provide your feedback and chime in. Uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, I mean, we might repeat some of the introductory information on the web page. I think that's fine, but we can get definitely get into more detail. It's a little bit more free form. Uh, you know, we can talk more about like the onboarding processes, uh, processes, more details on like monthly calls and expectations and and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I could definitely get started on this. Uh, let me go back to the slide and make sure that I'm covering everything here. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. And then this could be one of the sub page from under the code contributor handbook page. Um, so I, that's sort of the proposal. But uh, David, you had probably have more thoughts on this. So go. I'll let you add your thoughts here. No, I think I think that looks um, that looks perfect. I mean, it's uh, it's more or less what we discussed at uh, at contribute. To me, the to me personally, the point was uh, let's make sure let's make sure that uh, there's a place where um, the team policies, uh, the mission, uh, anything related to the functioning of the team can be updated uh, in the same way that um, that it is done with other teams at uh, at GitLab. Um, so let's not make the core team uh, special. Um, and then, uh, um, and then, yeah, let's not keep the, the web page um, growing. That, that, that was one I think that looks, uh, this looks great. Cool. So, other thoughts from people on the call, or no? Okay. Um, so that's actually the end of the formal agenda topics, but are there, I, it looks like, I mean, Ben and Remy joined uh, early in the call too. So if, if there are other topics that uh, we don't cover, we, can, we still have time to cover them as well. So. You guys are all so there quiet. Is I've got a question. Um, yeah. There is uh, an ongoing discussion about adding uh, a new member to the core team. I wonder if uh, if um, the participants in the call want to discuss it, but without it being recorded, so not to. Yeah. Just to yeah, I need. I'm having conversation with that individual to see if, if uh, he'd be interested. So I might have some news in the next couple of weeks. So. Okay. But yeah, let's keep that sort of under wraps for now. But. Uh, I'll, yeah, I can definitely reach out and see if you'd be interested in joining, but, and then we can open that up. Uh, I mean, which brings up another point. I mean, I, I don't know if there are other candidates that we should, we should think about, but I mean, that we don't have to go into detail today, but I mean, if, if, you know, people that are on the call or others can think of other candidates that, that we might want to consider for, uh, for an addition to the core team uh, to open an issue or just let, let me or David know. Cool. Okay, I, that might be all this, the, the, there may not be other topics then. Going once, twice, I guess we're set. All right, so like, if folks in Europe, I'll, I'll let you go get, grab your coffee or second cup of coffee if you need it, so. Thank okay. you, Ray. All right, thanks everybody. Have a good Bye, day. Everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a good day.